I just listened to the episode, and in the next segment, I keep on saying 40 million Trumpies and Trump voters. I say it twice at least, and what I meant is 70 million, because that's the number of people that voted for Trump. And 74, 75 million uh, voted for Biden-Harris. So in the next section, that's what I mean, and I thought I'd come in and correct myself, uh, because I can do that on Anchor.fm. Anyway, enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome to episode number 36 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and I need to turn the beeps back on to this little recorder so I know when it starts. I'm outside on a South Arlington piazza, a place called Penrose Square. So there's diesel trucks going by on Columbia Pike. So hopefully this filters against them pretty well. And hopefully those of you who are listening consider the background noise charming. I'll be rough. Oh, this episode is about uh, a possible um, reaction to uh, Joe Biden and um, Kamala Harris winning the election and having 40 million pissed off Trump voters to deal with on a daily basis. And the short I um, uh, TLDR of this is um, now complete and utter resist, hashtag resist, hashtag not my president, uh, disruptions and subterfuges is by definition fair game to those 40 million Americans. And there's really nothing you can do about it uh, short of of being as pissed off uh, as Trump was when uh, he was being resisted by 75 million uh, Obama supporters and uh, Biden supporters. So it's sort of fair game, but it's not fair, right? We're not remotely coming together. And we all know that uh, the transition team isn't getting any money right now because uh, President Trump hasn't conceded and won't concede until I dare say he is escorted out of the White House by uh, by the on-site security guards. Anyway, I'll be back right after the advert. Talk to you soon. Welcome back to episode 36 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. Um, I've just been, you know, I've just been your bombastic iconoclast. I feel like too many of all y'all think that I'm uh, a, a terrible person or that I'm a panderer or that how da- dare I even remotely speak for the 70 million Americans who have been dismissed as um, kicking dying donkeys. Uh, racist, sexist, um, jingoists, xenophobics, xenophobes, Nazis, white supremacists, uh, honkies and crackers for sure. And uh, no, nah, man, I just live in America and I know that there's there's a hell of a lot of them and I just know that they don't like being, first of all, they don't like being obstructed. 
They don't like being called Nazis. They don't look in the mirror and see a monster. Um, every word out of the mouth now. I just heard an episode of 1A uh, from today, which is November 9th. It's a um, NPR show, and it was uh, two scholars, one from Princeton and one from Rutgers, tearing America and America's uh, um, white population, I guess, a total new butthole, uh, saying basically uh, you, you have to concede all the way. I mean, universally, uh, this must be a complete surrender. A complete surrender without terms. Um, or things are going to get very ugly. And I feel like uh, there's going to be as much, if not more, subterfuge that's going to happen as a direct result. And I think what's even more is that... Um, BLM and Antifa are not going to just put down their uh, swords and molotovs and uh, signs either, because honestly, um, Biden and Harris don't solve anything. I mean, Harris isn't a isn't a an American descendant of slavery. She's uh, she's uh, um, a South Asian slash Jamaican African woman who's lived in America as an American, but she definitely is not a descendant of slavery, at least American slavery. I don't know what her story completely is. And I don't even believe that. I believe she's a woman of color. I believe she's a black woman. I believe she's biracial. I believe all that stuff. I'm speaking for the trees and I'm saying that enough propaganda has gone around that, um, it's quite possible that 70 million honkies and crackers and whiteies are going to make things very difficult. And <clears throat> it might not be at the, pardon me, it might not be at the level of the anti-Trump rage that, that has been happening deep within uh, the bowels of um, Department of Justice, of the intelligence community, of State Department, of America's bureaucracy, of lifers, of generals. Um, but it's going to be the other kind, which is the non-commissioned officers, the sergeants, the sergeant majors, the, um, <clears throat> the, the uh, government working class. And... Uh, and I don't know, maybe it'll just go away. Maybe it doesn't matter anyway. Maybe uh, it's not going to be any more desperate or refined than uh, every single uh, anti-Obama thing that was manifested during the eight years of the Obama White House. I mean, I was seriously on Team Obama, so I don't even know. I didn't even listen to what, quote, the other side was saying. But... Uh, you know, all I hear now from the other side is about guns and uh, about extremism and about basically communism and Marxism and all the good old classics. So we'll see. Uh, I just know that because the left and Democrats made every single day of the Trump White House uh, virtually un serviceable, not unlike a, um, a, uh, a terrorist taken into a detainment area by interrogators and played uh, death metal for four years, is the perception of the amount of trust, respect, and any type of approval or support that Trump received. So I believe that <clears throat> this is payback time where uh, senators and congressmen and lawmakers and judges and so forth could potentially actively, like seriously actively with with uh, the same kind of passion and uh, but not in the streets, you know, in in places of moderate or immoderate power, not great power. I believe that the powers that be are very happy that uh, Biden and Harris won. 
I couldn't be happier to see all my friends uh, relaxing a little bit. I thought that they were all going to get cancer or have heart attacks. So um, since I sort of have uh, the sympathy and empathy of feeling... I don't feel my own feelings, but I'm pretty good at feeling other people's feelings. It's really nice to see shoulders lowered and and constant vigilance to be relaxed a little bit, if only temporarily. Um, it'll be interesting, you know, all the conspiracy theorists talk about how the moment that Biden is elected, all the coronavirus will go away and that this was a pandemic and all that other kind of stuff. And it'll be interesting to see what the right says when that's not the case and when people are still locked down for a third or fourth spike or or uh, and then how people will deal with possible vaccines apparently in uh great britain they're saying there's a vaccine which is a m uh rna and mrna uh vaccine that's supposed to have a 90 percent eff- efficacy and then we've got the the massacre of the minks up in the uh, up in Norway, or was it somewhere in um, the Nordic countries, and uh, how um, a mutation of the uh, novel coronavirus, COVID-19 slash corona slash SARS-2 dash whatever, I don't remember, um, is going to mutate it enough than uh, 17 or 18 people supposedly uh, got that kind of coronavirus, so it'll be interesting to see if that goes anywhere and if we're going to be re-invaded um, from Europe by a enough of a of a mutation that everything starts off again, and even people with immunity, natural immunity, herd immunity, or having survived and having white blood cells that understand what's going on, will still not have defense against that. And uh, to see how much power and might the fringes have now from the right. I mean, there's always been anti-vaxxers, right? There's always been homeschoolers. There's always been racists and white supremacists and and all that other stuff. There's always been people who are anti-immigration on any level. There's always been people who are constantly fighting for the way it used to be. Um, now that they've got... Uh, drunkenness or 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 even an organization in a uh, a post in a a post biden world and a post sorry trump world um all of these all these people are actionable in the same way that when um when hillary clinton was defeated by trump uh, all of those lists were actionable and activatable active and um and so for, for uh, you know, four times 365 days, there's been constant struggle, constant resistance, constant fight back, constant defiance, constant subterfuge, constant counter messaging, constant. Uh, um, that's one thing is that the late night shows and the mainstream media and, and so on and so forth will never be a vocal. Uh, so. In terms of that, in terms of some sort of bubbling up uh, resistance movement against um, Biden and Harris, there is not going to be any corporate support for that. Not even, you know, I think that Fox News proved that it's not the way. So what is that 70 million people going to do? Are they going to all subscribe to Blaze? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Are they going to take it to YouTube, and will YouTube um, loosen its uh, its reins on the uh, counter culture quote hate filled militia groups that are on that platform? It'll be interesting to hear, and I will get back to you right after this break. Oh, thank you. (laughs) 
Welcome back to episode 36. My name is Chris Abraham. Uh, closing off now. You can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, uh, Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. You can reach me at Chris on No Agenda Social. Uh, you can email me at Chris at G-E-R-R dot I-S or Chris at Abraham dot S-U. My website is ChrisAbraham.com. Um, my LinkedIn is LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. My YouTube is Chris Abraham, sorry, is uh, YouTube slash YouTube dot, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. And if you want to text or call me, uh, you can go to plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. Uh, although if I don't recognize you, I will not reply or respond. Um, if you want to talk to me, you can reach me at calendly.com slash Chris Abraham slash 15 or slash 30 and we can talk. I'll talk to you soon. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe, thumbs up, give me five stars, review me and comment and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you.